Hello. Good morning, everybody. I just wanted to share some things about uh, my tatai, um, a little about his history and a little bit, uh, a few more things, or a little more personal about his life. Um, Flora was born on July 29, 1938, in Batanac, Philippines, to Felipe and Flora Porles. He was the youngest of seven children, and he married my nanay, Eva Limbo, of Quezon Province, Philippines, on December 20th, 1964. After graduating high school, he attended seminary in Iloilo City for one year, and later, later graduated from Far Eastern University in Manila with a degree in business administration, majoring in accounting. He worked at the National Power Corporation <clears throat> in Manila for many years, where he met my nanai. After moving to the United States, he worked at Lomas and Nettleton, which is a mortgage company. He worked for Los Angeles City College, and finally as a supervising accountant for the LI Unified School District. <clears throat> he retired in 1997. My Tata's hobbies included watching all types of, types of sports. He loved basketball, especially the Lakers, which everybody knew. Uh, he liked watching that show uh, Wicked Tuna and National Geographic. Above all, he enjoyed going to church and praying the rosary every day, at sometimes even more than once a day. In his youth, he was an altar server and continued to practice his Catholic faith into adulthood as a sacristan and Eucharist minister, member of Cursillo, and an active parishioner for St. Bernard's Catholic Church. My thought that was known for his sense of humor. He made jokes, but seldomly people actually knew he was joking. And as the patriarch and jokester of the family, his favorite thing to say was, I am the king. My tata is survived by his wife, Eva, of 51 years, two sisters, Paula and Lidai, four daughters and their spouses, Isabel Buckton, Gina Perlis, Rika and Matt Lilly, Lisa and Al Flowers, seven grandchildren and their spouses, Matthew Jill and Kishin Kuba, me, Daniel Caballero, Taylor Mactall, Cody Richardson, Kendall Flowers, Luke Richardson, Aiden Flowers, and two great grandchildren, the babies, Jackson Key and Kuba, and Kieran Flora Kuba, and his loving nieces and nephews, and numerous other relatives. He was preceded in death by his parents, Felipe and Flora. Brothers Miguel and Tony, sisters Agapita and Sally, and his son-in-law Mark Buckton. This is all information that's specific to the history of my grandfather, but I just wanted to touch on a few quick things about my grandfather that were outside of the formalities and more into his personal life. I've always known him as Tatai, For anybody who doesn't speak Tagalog or doesn't hear Tagalog commonly, Tatay means father. But everybody called him Tatay, not just his daughters, because he raised so many of us. And if you are fortunate enough to know him, you are always welcome in his Emanana's home. His generosity, even to a fault at times, had no limitations or borders. It's what made him so comfortable to be around, his desire to help and his sincerity. He was a tough guy at times, um, always with the karate moves and swiftness, but he was always cool and collected. These are merely companions to the qualities that were more true about him, sensitivity and tenderness. 
the kind that made him a proud father and grandfather on wedding days, and a humble man whose humility underrepresented his true merit. I remember talking to him a few months ago at a Toyota dealership. We had went together to get some maintenance done on his car. And um, we were there for uh, several hours because uh, the Toyota dealership had made a mistake and booked him on the wrong day, but he wasn't on the appointment list and he got frustrated. Uh, so we were there for about three hours which was fantastic, actually. Um, it was a mistake on their half that I'll always be grateful for because it, it gave us just a few extra hours together. And in that time, he talked about his, I asked him about his life and how he got here. He told me all about the journeys that led him to the move to the U US, all kinds of magical and serendipitous moments that afforded him the opportunity to change our family's future. And in it, as he rem reminisced about his life, I remember two moments uh, that were particularly amazing outside of his fantastic story. But um, he was telling me about the moment that someone really gave him a shot, gave him an opportunity. In the Philippines, this was before he went to college and was able to get a job and go to school. He had just come to Manila, and uh, he walked into a government building uh, to look for a job, and uh, anticipating that uh, it just wouldn't be in the cards for him. He went up to the receptionist and asked if he could speak to the manager, and she said, you know, it's highly unlikely. Uh, we don't really do that here, and uh, it's never worked like that. You have to be scheduled for an appointment, but go ahead and have a seat. Uh, by sheer luck, uh, the manager happened to have the same name, Perlas, but wasn't associated with our family that we know of. Uh, the guy called him in, and uh, he really took a liking to my data immediately, he told me. Uh, and it, it wasn't so much that, that moment where somebody cut him a break, it's, it's that he was so in awe about the fact that somebody was willing to give him an opportunity who didn't know him and was just merely feeding off his energy. Uh, when he told me about that, he had tears in his eyes because he was just overwhelmed with appreciation. And it's a level of gratitude that I really admire. Later on, he moved to the, he moved to the US and got a job at a mortgage company. He had a boss. He still remembered his name. His name is Jim Odom, and uh, he loved that guy. Even after he left, he told my tata as he was leaving, he said, Floro, you'll always have a job here, and if there isn't an open position, I'll fire somebody. I laughed and I thought to myself, wow, that manager guy is pretty terrible. But then I realized I couldn't blame him because that's the kind of guy that my thought I was. An inspiring guy with a good vibe about him. He was just the kind of guy you wanted to be around. But more importantly, he was the guy you hoped would just always be around. Thank you all for being here. Good morning. My name is Ed Pareja. This is my Paris. I have known Brother Ploro for about more or less 25 years. My first encounter with him was when we prayed the rosary in their home. Their family was one of the 54 families in our rosary group, Our Lady of Florida. Every so often on Saturday, my wife and I would go to their house to pick up Sister Eva 
to join with other families in prayer. On one occasion, I was able to talk to Brother Ploro. We had a short conversation. Brother Ploro was a quiet, soft-spoken man of few words. A few weeks later, I asked him if he could consider volunteering as an usher in St. Bernard. He said yes, and he did. A few months later, I asked him if he, could, if he would consider serving as a Eucharistic minister with Sister Eva and become part of my group. They did. That was the beginning of their wholehearted involvement with the church. And it did not end there. Their dedication to the church extended beyond service in the mass to assisting with the youth ministry, which was big help for, for Sister Remy. The late Monsignor Gerald McSorley have, been, have seen Brother Ploro's passion for church service that he assigned Brother Ploro together with the select, select few the responsibility for the church structures and its facilities. Responsibility, Brother Ploro took to heart. Even after he was diagnosed with advanced lung cancer, he continued to perform his duties and responsibilities in the church. He did not allow his illness to stop him. As long as he had the strength, he pushed on. In fact, he was determined to, to continue to the service of others for as long as he could. Imagine, he would leave the comfort of his warm bed to open the doors of St. Bernard. At around six o'clock or earlier, so that people might have time to spend with the Lord before they go to work. That's the kind of person Brother Ploro was, thinking of others first before himself. Even if, even at his, even in his sick bed, bed, he was thinking if somebody in the church is is there to keep going. You know, I saw firsthand Brother Ploro, compassion to people. When he joined me in the weekly apostolate at the Convalescent Hospital, where we visited presidents, talked with them, and prayed with them. Through his apost to this apostolate, we become very close. Our conversation became longer, and we would talk about everything from family matters to what may be weighing in our hearts at time to thoughts that happen to cross our mind. I remember one Sunday, as we were walking in the hospital parking lot, Brother Ploro asked me, do you think when we are much older, there would be people to pray with us and to pray for us. My answer then was tentative but hopeful. Ang sagot ko sa kanya, marahil mayroon din, or in English, maybe. With all the people that visited Father Ploro, in the hospital. All the people that prayed for his strength, his comfort, and his peace. And now, 
looking at all of you. I know, and he knows, that the answer to his question is a resounding yes. Yes, there will be people praying for you. Brother Floro, because you have touched the lives of so many, including myself. I am blessed to have Brother Ploro in my life. And I treasure the years we shared. I am also ever thankful to him, his wife, Sister Eva, and their family for, for, for their generous support of my son, Father Pius, who is celebrating today their congregation, the Marian of Missionary of the Holy Cross. Their generosity for many years has helped to nurture the dreams of many seminarians, becoming priests, including my son, Father Pius. to the Paradise family. I am forever grateful. Thank you. Brother Toro, I love you and I miss you. By God's grace, I shall see you again. Paalam. Brother Ploro, goodbye. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother Ploro. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. I invite you to join with me in the song of farewell with the response... Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to his aid. Hasten to meet him, angels of the Lord. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. May Christ who called you take you to himself and may angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. In our concluding prayer, I invite you to extend your hand in blessing over Floro. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he rises with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Floro in this life, they are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.